rivalry taking place this week? I don't call it rivalry because last time I checked, the Jets haven't lost to the Broncos in I don't know how long. You mean you said that the other way around? You said the, the Jets. Broncos haven't, haven't lost to the Jets in I don't know how long. Right? Well, let's go ahead and bring in our Jets guy. I have Dom on the phone, and uh, Dom, we mentioned that your bet that you made with Nico, it's a little bit out there, and. Uh, we, I'm just going to have you say it. So if the Broncos beat the Jets, or the what Jets is the, the Broncos? Or, or, yeah, Bron- yeah, right. The Broncos beat the Jets. What's the stipulation that you would then have to you have to do to fulfill your side of the bet? If the Broncos beat the Jets, if anybody knows me, I, they know that I am a very hairy individual. If the Broncos beat the Jets, I have to get my chest waxed. Yeah, and, and it's 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 – I, I try to be nice because because he offered he was like well I'm gonna make your uh, um, profile picture a Jets Jets logo and I was like well I'm, you know I'm tr- I'm trying to be a businessman I'm trying to get into some NFTs so I don't know if I want to keep that for that long so I, I I returned the favor and I was like you know what I'll buy you whatever jersey you want because that poor guy has some shit jerseys and and I don't know I, don't, I honestly. I would probably get him like an old school jersey because why the fuck would I get you a Zach Wilson jersey when he's going to be gone in two years anyways? Well, there you go, Dom. Now you know his side of the bet. If the Jets win, you'll get whatever Jets jersey you want from Nico. Uh, but I want to get your – why would you put your Chester on the line? Nobody coerced you into this. I want you to say that for the record too. Nobody coerced you love to hear why he into this, but win. give us the story as to why you decided putting your chest hair on the line was the best option for you. You know, I, nobody forced me into this, I'll say that. But I I am the biggest believer in the Jets. And after the draft and the offseason that they've had, um, actually winning games in the preseason, that's a huge step up for them. Um, I know it's preseason, but still. Oh, my God. How the fuck did you say that with a straight face? How the fuck did you say that with a straight face? Nobody has more oh faith God, in their team than my brother. Oh, my God. We're winning preseason games. Somebody fucking bring to the parade. The parade is coming back to New York, baby. We'll see. Uh, Holy they, Dom, shit. Oh, we know man. you're picking the Jets. We're doing our pick now. So we wanted to get you on, and we wanted the bench warmers to know what the bet what was on the line this week for the game. So thanks for explaining your reasoning and uh, – Hopefully you have some sweaters or some thick shirts because if your chest is waxed, it's starting to get colder. Uh, it's going to be pretty chilly. You're not going to have that sweater, that natural sweater to defend you. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a little difficult saying goodbye, but you know what? I, I made the bet. I'm a man of my word. Yeah, your girlfriend will be very, very fortunate for you. <laughs> All right, Don. We'll talk to you later. Why the fuck would you ever bet on a team? Based upon how they performed in the preseason. Oh my god, I can't believe that's where we're at. Oh, look, that's where that's, that is, is, I, I have to say right now, that is the most optimistic Jets fan I think alive. Yeah. Like, like, holy shit. Oh, you I know, know my brother. But, you know my brother has more faith in the good of. Mark, my brother has more faith in the good of the universe look, than anybody I've ever met. This is going to buy me the ass, probably going to lose, probably not, because we're at home, for fuck's sake. But holy shit. <laughs> I love you, Dom, but fuck, do, do yourself a favor. Don't ever take that much consideration into a fucking preseason game. I would rather go 0-3 than fucking win every single preseason game because that shows that the te- that my team has played with their backs against the wall. For fuck's sake. I'm hoping that the, oh my God, I'm hoping that the Broncos win man. just for the content because I'm going to get my 40-year-old virgin moment. That's all I care about. Um, we, we were doing that exclusively on the on, on, on your on the other podcast because <laughs> fucking Christ. Yeah. That is, oh man. Look, if you don't can't tell about what the way I'm going, I'm picking the Broncos. I don't think there's any doubt about that. The, I, the line, shout out my bookie, is minus 11. You know the last time the Broncos were minus double, or double digit favorites? I do not. No. 2016 against the Chiefs. Last the last time with last year with Peyton against the Chiefs, and that's that, that was the last one. Like it, it's it's kind of nuts. Like it's and and. Do you think they win by that? I guarantee a win. You'll hear about what, what line I like for the Broncos a little bit later. But I'm going to hammer the love 100%. Honestly, that, that's going to be my biggest bet of the weekend probably because if Zach Wilson is, 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 is throwing ducks 
to, to, to fucking the Patriots, the Patriots defense, who was not as good as it once was. This Broncos defense, Von Miller is going to tee off. Absolute tee off. Put him on a tee, break the driver out, knock that shit 500 yards. Now he is going to bomb against the, whatever tackle we put out there because Beckton is, is injured still. And even without Bradley Chubb, fucking Jonathan Cooper or or uh, uh, Purcell, no, Purcell, Purcell destroy the interior <laughs> about off good old Shelby Harris a little yeah. there too. <laughs> I mean, look, Patrick Sut- Patrick Sutan went from oh man, Levis and Chanel, these two are good receivers. Oh fuck, I have to face Elijah Moore. Does he know who the fuck I play? Patrick Sutan. I'm gonna call it here. It, look, I, I I didn't look at this line in my booking since I'm wearing my Teddy Two gloves. There's a line. T- Patrick Sertan to have an interception, book it. Put it on my book. You get that in your book. Like, book that because I guarantee you that's going to happen. Yeah, just have my bookie open while you're watching games because they have quarter bets. So you can bet on just over, under per quarter, player props, all of, all of those kinds of things. Player props. I won a lot of money as player props. I won money on Monday night with TJ Hawkinson, Hawkinson touchdown. I won money um, on, on, uh, on Sunday night football. I had... Uh, fucking, uh, there was one person last night. Oh, uh, Darren Waller. You got Darren Waller last Darren week. Waller. Yeah, Darren Waller. Like the player props where the money honestly is at. Because the player props, you can hammer that. Especially games like this. Fucking, scrolling, starting to have a touchdown. I don't know what the odds are on my bookie. I'm not, you don't have to look at that because my gloves. I can't afford my computer. But, but, scrolling, starting to odds to score a touchdown. I hammer that, man. Honestly, I mean, Javante Williams also, the dude hasn't had, had, the running game for the Broncos is the one spot that hasn't been consistent yet. Outside of the 70-yard Melvin Gordon touchdown run. But honestly, I love Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams to get a touchdown too this weekend. Yeah, I'm picking the Broncos. I just don't think, especially with what, what the Jets have shown in the first two weeks, I don't think that they're ready. Going back to mile high. I don't think they're ready to beat the Broncos in Denver. But Zach you know, Wilson is not ready to beat the Broncos in Denver. Before we go into any other games, now that we've gotten that out of the way and the Monday Night Football game is over from last week, uh, I can now update the stats for everybody. Nico retook the lead. He had the best week, uh, 11-5. 11-5. Time. Time. So you, beat, you now have the best week so far this season because I, I finished 10-6 and six last year. Now you're 20-12. and 12. I am 18-14 and 14 on the season with my loss on the Lions. And then the bench warmers, you guys are pulling up the rear. You know, we're, we're helping you along. That's why we're introducing my, my bookie. We'll drag your asses to the top of the mountain. That's okay. You guys are sitting at 17, 13, and 1 because of that random tie in week one. It's very Good old Bengals. Yeah, you guys had a Bengals pick in week one. But now uh, let's start. We'll go from the top and uh, all the betting lines, like Nico mentioned, but we're, all, we're getting all our betting lines from mybookie.ag. Be sure to check them out. Use our promo code BENCHWARMER to be entered into the $50,000 Survivor Sweepstakes. Uh, Carolina, Houston. That's the first game that I have down here. This is a shit show, too. It, it, it it's is. It's a shit show, but you're like, damn, these teams have looked decent. That's and like, like, Carolina, no one thought Darnold was going to do much. And and fucking poor Tyrod Smith, man. If you Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Well, Tyrod Smith saying, plays left tackle for the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? is game wrong. When he plays, the Texans could have won that game last week. Like, like they... they and they did win week one. I yeah. thought that they were gonna get. I thought they were gonna go own seventeen. They can, like they're look. Shut up, Phil. Shut up, Phil. That the people gave shit for the Texas Bowl. You just signed a bunch of old running backs. Like, go well. Every single one of them is producing. Phil Lindsay's not old. Phil Lindsay's not that old. Mark Ingram, he's old, but he's Mark still Ingram is, out. Mark Ingram is old. Phil Lindsay's not that old. I hate. I hate that we're at the age now that we have to watch guys that are younger than us in the NFL. No. That's just a little bit disappointing for me. They, they're mentioning Penny School tonight, but he's the youngest offensive tackle. Twenty years old, 20, youngest 20 player. Years. Yeah, I think youngest player in the league. Uh, he's, maybe, he's, he's definitely the youngest, youngest lineman, offensive lineman ever in NFL history. Yeah, I saw that. I time. think Trey Lance might be the only other guy close to his age that could possibly start a game, but uh, I think that this one is going to be a lot closer than I would have if you asked me two weeks ago. I think that Carolina's going to beat it, and it's Joe Brady is the X factor for me. I'm not even going to substitute Joe Brady. I said run CMC. I'm still going to go run CMC is the X factor here. Look, run CMC hasn't been unleashed yet. The dude hasn't played the, the type of fantasy football game that everyone drafted him number one for. The guy, he's had some good games, but he's been trying to get in the form. I think this is the form game. Look, the Texans, I think they're going to make it very interesting. I don't even know. I'll tell you. Is Dan Spill starting? Because I don't, I don't know if Tyrod's playing. Because if Tyrod, if, if, if Davis Mills is starting, then I'm even hammering this more Carolina. 
Um, but either way, I'm still going Carolina here. I'll give you some. I, this is interesting because I just looked it up. My bookie right now has the Texans money line plus two ninety five. That's yeah. not, not a bad one. I'm say, that's what I'm saying. Like the, that's a good money line underdog, and it's a matchup that's not super one way or the other. I think Panthers are the better team if you're just going to look at on it. paper. So if you have to pick a better team, because really there's not a great team in this yeah. area. If you have to pick the better team, Carolina's the better team. And like, Panthers start three. Who would have thought that? I did. Wow. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought we would be here? Yeah. Next game: Arizona Cardinals, Jacksonville Jaguars. I think it's easy to. See pick who both of us think is going to win. Actually, the, well, yeah, we, I think it's easy to pick who is going to win. Uh, my bookie right now has the Jaguars at a plus 285, and the line for the Cardinals is minus seven and a half. So they're a fairly big favorite for the NFL, especially for a road team. Normally the home, you get a three point gimme when you're the home team, and they're not doing that right now for, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I'm going Cardinals. You're going Cardinals. I'm uh, 100 going Cardinals. Uh, Kyler Murray is going to be a, like I said, I, I said it last week, maybe it was too soon, but I think I can say with confidence he's top three MVP conversation right now. A dude is playing on a different level. Like, I love the little baby Yoda stick. That, that shit's hilarious, too. Like, uh, the, the dude is just having fun, and, and when you have DeAndre Hopkins and you have as good defense as you have, why the hell would you not have fun? Yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, I think that might be my favorite episode of Greg Iron Heights. Yeah. We come from similar college schemes. Uh, next game that we have here, Washington football team, who is 2-0. 2-0, Washington football team, yeah. Yeah, oh. they are, right? Or maybe they're 1-1. No. They're, they're winning the no, NFC. No, they're 1-1. One one. They're, one one. they're one winning one. the NFC Beast. They are winning the NFC Beast. So they have that going for them. They are a plus-9 underdog going into Buffalo to take on Josh Allen and the Bills. Uh, look, Washington, they played a very good game against New York, but they should have won that game by a lot more. Ta- Tyler, is it Tyler or is it Taylor? Taylor Heineke. I thought, I've heard Tyler, so I don't know, I don't know anymore. But either way, Heineke and, look, this, this Washington fo- football team plays good team game, first of all. If you're, like, please pick Red Hogs or Red Wolves, that's all I'm asking. Uh, but I'm riding the Bills here, no pause on that. Uh, because Josh Allen, like I said, at home, this ain't the Pittsburgh Steelers coming into Buffalo. I'm sorry. This is this is not a legit. Okay, I won't say that. Washington well, defense. It. And that's a legitimization. That's a legitimization. And I was gonna say that Washington defense that we talked about that was gonna be so good. It, it's not terrible. Not they were in the playoffs. No. They were. If you just go back to the wild card game against Tampa, that Washington team beats the shit out of this Washington team. Oh, easily, easily. And it's not even. A, one cool story that I heard about Taylor Heineke before we move on from this game, because I'm also going the Bills, uh, he had to move for that divisional game. He had to move his finals for college. He had to go into the, his professor's it. office. He's like, listen, coach, uh, yeah, I'm playing this week. Or professor, professor so-and-so, I'm playing this week. So is it okay if I do the makeup final? Now that's going to be at Sunday at 6 o'clock. Are you going to be back by that time? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I, I could possibly play. be playing, playing again next week. Yeah, well, I just don't know if that's going to work out. I, I didn't know that, so that's yeah. hilarious. Uh, so we both are going with Buffalo, I'm sure. But the bench rumors like to pick what we picked. Yes. There hasn't been many polls where they go opposite of us, so I think we'll all three be hammering Buffalo. Uh, next up, Bengals and Steelers. Uh, <laughs> do you, do you want to start? What's the line on this? Because I bet Steelers at home is a very, very big dog. Yeah, I'm uh, Cincinnati Bengals plus four and a half. I, that's, that's actually pretty reasonable. And money line plus 185. Wow. Actually, wow. My bookie is very generous. Yeah, they put all that Bengals slander in our ad read. Obviously, they've never, or they've listened to the podcast, but they skipped over the part where I talked about my undying allegiance to the Bengals. That is very generous. <laughs> I made the read go oh the way that gosh. I purposely made you read the shit about the Steelers and Bengals and Ravens because I, I couldn't do it. I, do that to myself after this weekend. Holy shit, I need to put that in, in, in my new segment. Fuck, I, I didn't even realize that. I'm going to have to change one of the things around. But yeah, holy, I'm hammering the Steelers here because the Steelers, look, the, the, look, the Raiders may be good. Maybe it's it's the John Gruden at the beginning of the year. I don't know. But Kenji Green is just going to demolish the Cincinnati Bengals. He's, got, he's going up against Larry Ogunjobi. He has actually a tougher matchup than he has so far this year other than Ed Oliver. So I'm, I'm excited to see him go against him. But 
And Najee Harris is also another person we haven't talked about yet. He's slowly getting the form. He hasn't hit the stride yet, but you can tell it's there. The only issue that I see with this game, I'm picking the Steelers too. The only issue that uh, I see with Write this down, everyone. He's picked the Steelers. Oh, I did last year. Oh, you, you picked the Bengals twice last year. Okay, okay. But obviously <laughs> that, was, that was out of spite. Yeah, I was just doing it out of spite. I, I see the problem. The, what, the only reason that I don't see the Bengals having a shot to win this game is because their defense won't give them the opportunities that they will need to score the amount of points that they're going to, going to need to know. Because their offense... Their offense is going to struggle. Their offense is going to have a rough day. T.J. Watt, he got he was banged up. He was banged up on Sunday. I'm not sure his status for the game. I'm pretty sure he's like, oh, we're playing the Bengals. I'll be healthy. I'll be good. Oh, man. I get gonna, the pass rush against Jonah Williams. He's going to tee off. He's going to have a field day. And then also, when you worry about him, then Joe Burrow is actually facing good DBs. Yeah. And and Mar- and and, uh, and Joe Hayden and uh, Mika Fitzpatrick over the top. Jamar Chase is going to have, 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 have a lot more problems than trying to catch the football. All I'm saying is that Brandon Allen beat the Steelers team when they're in the midst of going on a playoff. At home. At home. At home. At home. At home. At home. It isn't. It, they have not They get their shit pushed in all the time in Pittsburgh. But, yeah, when you're playing a team well, like the – I just want to have hammer the yeah. fuck out of that. Don't even because the, the, the Steelers, I don't think, are going to put up a ton of points. But they will outscore them by yes. a touchdown. They will. They will. Yeah. Like, the, like this is this is this is a uh, uh, Broncos Jaguar scenario of last week. I was surprised it was, at, it was at, at minus six last week. I thought it should have been more because look at the line, like four and a half. You're telling me the Steelers can't score one more touchdown that it's going to be a one possession game by the end of the game? I'm sorry, yeah, I know. that's not going to happen. But if the Bengals win, it's going to be a three point or less victory. It's yeah. not going to be a fourteen point blowout or whatever it was last year late in the season. So. The line is favorable if you're a betting fan. Let's just say that. Uh, we are we both are going with the Steelers because I'm trying to actually win the pick them this year. Bears at Browns, next game. And uh, we'll look at my bookie here for the Bears-Browns game. It's set at 7.5. So Browns are minus 7.5. And their odds for that one is minus 105. Uh, that's that's interesting. I wonder if that will play, play in the factor if Justin Fields um, is named a starter. I mean, let's be honest, Matt Nagy wasn't named the starter until Sunday anyways. So I don't think it matters that much. But I'm still going Cleveland here because Cleveland Cleveland's a team that we, we are running under the radar the first two weeks of the season. They have that game with Kansas City the first week that they – Great, they, great that game. That was a great game. And now th- this past week they just – they came in and they – Took care of business, like like, and Cleveland's kind of flying over. That's just the way they want it. They don't want people talking about them, and I, and that's better for Cleveland. Like that's way better for them. And coming in and beating Chicago, I think is gonna be a walk in the park. I I I have no faith in that now. Zero. No. Now you're zero. And he's keeping secrets and nobody gives a fuck about. Him. So I'm hammering the Browns here. The minus seven is a little bit stray away though, because I think the Bears can keep it. Interesting. I'll tell but, you, Will Mack has looked like absolute dog shit for the past two years. That's because he, there's nothing else in the defense. Yeah, I mean they have Keen Hicks, they have Robert Quinn, uh, Eddie Jackson. Like there's other guys. Eddie Jackson, Roquan Smith. Too, yeah, shit. Roquan. Or Eddie Jackson is playing like absolute garbage. Roquan Smith. Uh, he had a pick six against Joe Burrow, so yeah. Roquan Smith is still on that defense, but. I think that the Browns are going to be if if the Browns play the way that they should, and it being in Cleveland, I'm not as wary about them not winning by more than a touchdown. I think they should be able to cover that minus seven and possibly even win by and like that, 10, the, 10, And your division gets so much more interesting. Yeah. Because in reality, I'll tell the Bengals, Steelers, Ravens, and Browns all have legitimate shots. All right. But All right. I know that's painful for you to You're say. going with Cleveland, right? Yep, I'm right with Cleveland. You're going with Cleveland. I went with Cleveland. Ravens, Lions. Uh, you heard it in our my bookie read. The Lions have not beaten the Ravens since Lamar Jackson was in seventh grade. Or second grade. Second, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if that means anything to you, the Lions just got their asses kicked on, on Monday Night Football against an Aaron Rodgers team who put up three points against the Saints. <laughs> this is going to be you. The Lions were winning... At halftime, I just want to point that out. Or at least yeah. for the, through, yeah, halfway through the second, second quarter. Yeah, so halfway through the second quarter. The, they were winning. They were winning. But the Lions, look, only this team, I don't know. What, like, Jerry Goff has actually played pretty decent. I'll be honest. But th- their defense is just abysmal. Abysmal. 
Like they they got the right pieces on offense. Like they need another receiver. You have a good running back core. Jamal Williams, John Joseph, there's nothing to slap about. You got a good offensive line now. You you obviously have the the you have one of the best tight ends and one of the most up and coming tight ends, TJ Hawkinson too. That was and, a great catch. Right? Oh, absolutely. Money, money on that. Yeah. So that catch too. And you can this Lions team will be interesting, but this Ravens team, like I said, the relationship Jim Harbaugh and Mark Jackson have. That's a relationship I think every team wishes their quarterback and coach had. Because, because it, 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 look, don't get me wrong, Zach Taylor has made some stupid moves, but if Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow had that familiarity with it, one another, and were making games interesting, Zach Taylor would be would be top of the list of, of coaches that could make some make some noise. Yeah. But he doesn't. No, he doesn't, and I wouldn't trust. If I was Joe Burrow, I wouldn't trust Zach Taylor. Harbaugh, Har- Lamar, are just a different animal. I'm riding Baltimore 100 percent here. I don't see the next line that we have here on, on my bookie. I think it's probably because of the Lions. Well, the Lions they're still playing. Yeah, they, they have an update. I, I would expect, obviously, a minus. I'll look up. I'm, I'm not going to mention double digits. I might think that might be double digits. Maybe. I'm not going to mention who the, what the odds are from here. I'm just going to get a number for you guys. And then when my bookie updates after the Lions game tonight, uh, be sure to check out the line here. Yeah. Ravens and Lions. Ravens and Lions. Here we go. And they don't even have a line listed on ESPN. So that's what I'm saying. They, they wait. They usually won't. Yeah. Them. You gotta wait a little bit, but a it's easy rate, to pick. Rate, well, yeah. Easy to pick the Ravens. Right? Easy, easy, easy. This is not a game that the Lions are gonna steal from anybody. The Lions. I think the only team that they have a shot of beating, and they play them twice. Minnesota Vikings. This is true. Next game that we have here: Colts Titans. Battle of the AFC South. The two teams that we picked to be one and two in the AFC South. Uh, very bad AFC South, and we and isn't it a four-way tie I think right now? Right. Or no, no, Jacksonville's on too. Three-way tie. Three-way tie. Yeah. Three-way tie between the Colts, Titans, and Texas. Texas. Uh, Colts. Oh no, Colts might be on too. Colts are yeah, they, they lost. Are they, yeah, yeah. Hey, two-way tie. Carson wins. How do you sprain both ankles in one play? <laughs> Only Carson Wentz can do that. Look, look I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say a hot take here. Colts are gonna be a t- the second worst team in this division. Look. I don't. They have. Who's gonna? The, the Texans beat them. The Texans uh, finish higher. Than Tyrod Taylor would, I think, could beat the Colts. I'm serious. Their defense looks not great. Their defense is not good at all. Russell Wilson just had a field day against them. And then the Rams came in and just pumped them. Basically, they they made it interesting. Man, don't get me wrong. But that's because 18 was in the building. <laughs> Let's be honest. That's the only reason. You got the Colts have to bring legends back to make games interesting. Because Carl, like I said last week, they're begging Andrew Luck to come back. Colts had needed a lot to happen. And Tennessee, it was a wake up game. It was a slap in the face. Arizona came in and pumped you. And then they said, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Derek. I'm sorry, Derek Henry. I'm sorry, Leo Jones. Let me just feed 22, and then all of our problems will be solved. It's all it, all it took. All it took. It's all that took. Uh, right now, the Colts plus five at plus 100, which, if you. That's a sucker's bet. That a sucker. They want. They're trying to tease you with the the positive odds. Don't take that. Don't take that. Uh, Titans minus five. What do you feel about that? Because of, because of the the play style of the game, I think honestly I would take plus five in Indianapolis because both teams are run heavy. Run heavy. Yeah. And I think it'll be a lower scoring game. What does the do we have the over under that game too? Forty eight. I would take the under. Take. I would hammer the under. I would I would stay away from the spread on that one. I'd hammer the under because like I said. The clock is going to tick. And when you have Jonathan Taylor on one side, Derek Henry on the other, the ball is just going to be wrong. This game is going to be in and out in <laughs> three <laughs> hours. Yeah. The longest thing that they're going to do is warm ups, and that's going to be it. Uh, money line for that game, by the way Colts plus 210, 10, Titans minus 260. Um, so, pretty, pretty favored towards Tennessee. We're both for the boys, both going for the Titans. Next game up. Chargers and Chiefs, divisional matchup. The Chargers always, I told you, Chargers yeah. find ways to lose football games. I don't care who they have a quarterback. I don't care if Justin Herbert is the man. <laughs> they find ways to lose football games. He is the man. I don't. Like, that's another team that I started giving love to, and I finally, I picked against them, I think, in every other pick them that we've done, unless they were playing like the Browns, or not even the Browns, uh, the Jaguars or some crap team like that. And as soon as I jumped on their bandwagon, the yeah, 
<laughs> maybe I'm too heavy. For, maybe I'm too heavy for these bandwagons. Maybe I gotta. Maybe I ought to just be an NFL fan. I'll be like yeah. Rob Lowe and show where, up and play the game with the NFL cap. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. That's your best line. I'm hot. I'm hammering Kansas City because I think they got embarrassed on Sunday night, and I think they came with a vengeance. And look, the Chargers won a game against Kansas City last year. In wow, I was about to say something. In L.A. It was in L.A. Yeah. And they made the game against Kansas City interesting. But look, the, the, the Chargers, Bosa has looked decent, but like he's not what he was before injury. Darryl James is not before what he was injury. This defense is depleted. They lost uh, Melvin Ingram, too. Melvin on Ingram. Side, so Travis now. Kelsey is going to have some damn yeah. ass. Yeah. No beer, Trav, is going gonna, is gonna to come in and rock them. Because look, this Kansas City team, like I said, pissed off. I, don't, I can't remember the last time Kansas City lost two in a row. I want to say almost that, that 2016 team. Mm-hmm. I think so. That's probably when it was when Alex Smith was still the quarterback. Um, I'll tell you this one. I think this is going to be my virtual lock of the episode. In this game, over 55 and a half. Yes. Game. Oh, absolutely. Over absolutely. 55 and a half. At least this game will hit at least 60. Maybe even by the end of the first half. <laughs> absolutely. The, 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 like, they put up stupid ones. Mm-hmm. Like, like it'll be dumb points where you're these like, two teams just play mad against each other. Like, like the offenses are like, you know what? Who can outshoot the other? Like, you know, we don't have a shield or anything. It's like when we play Clash of Clans. Like, you just do an auto attack. I got no defense. defense. Yeah, no defense whatsoever. I I'm just sure. attacked you with sure. everything I had. And why the fuck do the Chiefs put Chris Jones at defensive end? They put him on the outside. I know it sounds said that. I heard someone. I think it was Pat McAfee show said it. They were like, why the fuck would you put one of the best interior defensive line? And move him outside and say, you know what, your pass rush is better. It's not. It's not. He's, he's a, a reason. deadly pass rusher inside. It's as a not, center a guard, stop, yeah. as a former center guard, that man, the size of that man. First off, I would, oh, I would show up to the game, yeah. get off the bus, and I, it would be the another Sim, uh, Simpsons meme, but like the grandpa walking in, putting his hat on the rack, turning around, like, oh, I have to block Chris Jones. I'm oh, good. Man. I'm good. No, I'm, I'll go get a labor job or something. Uh, I don't know what that is. Right now, six and a half is where the line is. That's. Right. I mean, I would not hate that. I think by the end of the game, Chargers make games look closer than they should. Let's put it that Make games way closer. They like to cover that. That's like, good. They do they, like to cover. They're good betting. Good for, like good, yeah, good, for your, good for your book. Not good if you're a Chargers fan because the, te- the games look closer. Your team's always need to go. Joke's on them. There are no Chargers fans. That's true. All uh, right, next game, Saints Patriots. Man, if, people, if we start gaining some traction and people hear some of the shit I said about the other teams and they realize I'm a Bengals fan, oh, <laughs> make it a field day deal. There's no Chargers fans, anyways. Yeah, just about as many Bengals fans. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, moving on, moving on. Saints Patriots. I'm gonna surprise you. I'm gonna go Saints. Look, the Saints looked terrible last week, but yep. Jameis has this thing where he has a great week, shit week, and then comes back with a great week. It's not a back-to-back back. To back, back you back think he's going to gonna bounce back against Bill Belichick? <laughs> After know. Bill Belichick I legitimately, <laughs> like, fondled and played exactly. with the Jets, <laughs> all he wanted, anything he wanted to do, he did? I don't know. I think, look, look you got to remember, the Saints are a pretty damn good coach team, too. Yeah. yeah. Sean Payton is the hell they of a They just have a stupid person, that quarterback. <laughs> a guy that does it. Uh, he might be the dumbest guy that I've heard publicly speak for quite some time. Hey, you know what? WW, I just gotta do what we gotta do. You know, we gotta get that. We, w, my we coach gotta, told us we have to uh, prepare, or so, what was it? Practice. Practice. Yeah. Practice. Yeah. Know. He told me at practice that we had to practice. Yeah. Practice. Okay. I'll That's practice. that Florida State <laughs> education. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know why I felt it in my bones. I was like, I don't know why, but I'm games in Fox Pro too. I know it is, but it's it's a day game, it's a day. and and Mac Jones. This isn't his first home game, is it, or is it? I think so. It might be because they, everybody. They were in New York last week, yeah. Yeah. And then the week before, I don't remember where they were. They so lost they, to Miami week before. So no, might, this is the second home game because they lost to Miami at home. That's right. So yeah, I, look, I'm still gonna ride with ride with the same time. I don't know why I feel like I'm bumps. It was kind of like a Tennessee Titans one last week. I didn't know. I didn't have a great reason for it, but I just feel it. Man. That game is this is one of the closest games that we've had so far. Three is the spread. Plus three, my, plus three for the Saints, minus three for the Patriots. Minus three on the Patriots is plus 100 dollars by the way. That's pretty good. Uh, that is pretty good. Even yeah. if you're going to go against my good bill. Money line, plus 130 uh, for the New Orleans Saints, minus 150 for the Patriots. So that's that's one of the games where if you wanted to bet on the underdog or the favorite, you could still 
you can make more money back than you would in normal situations. So I, you're going Saints. I went with the Patriots. Um, I just don't don't know how Jameis is going to beat Bill Belichick in Foxborough. I don't I don't know why, but I think he, he, he he's got that swagger. They're going to use W. Bro. That's okay. Yeah. The only the difference between our picks right now because. I had this a dumbass the pick. In the picks. No, I know. I had a dumbass pick last week that you were giving me shit for. The only difference is your dumbass pick won last week, and mine didn't. <laughs> so, uh, next game that we have: Falcons at the Giants. This is another game. Speaking you of dumbass picks, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm riding the Falcons. Oh. Here we go. Yep, I said it. They made the Buccaneers game interesting at the end. Look, the the, the Giants, they are. Uh, you said this defense is good. This defense is ass. Da- da- Danny fumbles, not Danny Dimes. This Danny fumbles the ball. Danny Danny. Da- and, and like this, Saquon. I I I, I have Saquon on one of my fantasy teams, and he, I picked him up in the second round. And I was like, well, this is this is a pretty good, this is a pretty good uh, skill in the second round. He hasn't done shit. He has literally hasn't done anything. For fuck's sake, I'll, if you're not healthy, don't play. Save myself. The burden of playing you weekly by just being out for the game and me replacing you with someone that is going to try. Because you know, as soon as you take him out of your lineup, he's going to go off. Yeah, points. exactly. Like I, it's, a, it's a position where I have to keep him in, and it's just painful. Yeah, it, it hasn't been good, but the Atlanta Falcons playing football this entire season has been painful. They, like I said, they made the Buccaneers game interesting. The Buccaneers were already planning golf trips for them. I know game. they were, and, and Tom Brady took over in the fourth quarter, and they scored 30 on answer. I think something stupid like that. But, like I said, they have talent in Atlanta. They do. They just have no talent on defense side of football. Yeah. <laughs> they have great talent on offense side. Calvin really stud. Kyle Pitts, like I said, stud. Matt Ryan is still doable. Like, I'm proud of Atlanta. The godfather of quarterback football got out of the shotgun. Matt Ryan, by the way. Yeah. He, him and Kyle Shanahan, they got together one off season and put in the West Coast footwork that's normally out of under center, and they put it in as a shotgun. And Matt Ryan was the first quarterback to be able to do it. Uh, former MVP, Matt Ryan. Uh, yeah, former, former MVP. MVP. Yeah. Twenty-eight to three. Though. That's still. That's, that's we talk about the form. double doink curse. That's the, the twenty-eight curse. to three curse is going. Very bad. The organization and Matt Ryan. Not Ryan right, was a good quarterback. I mean, he still is not bad, but he doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, he hasn't been able to get back up there. Uh, the next game, because we talked about the Cardinals and the Broncos, Cardinals, Jags, and Jets, Broncos already. Next game that we have here, I believe it's the start of the later slate. Las Vegas and Miami, the Raiders against the Dolphins. Now we don't know if two is going to be playing because, like I said, he's he's questionable. The only thing that's kind of keeping him out right now is whether or not. Do we he know? Can, do we know who the backup is? Jacoby Percent. Oh, that's right. That's right. I do remember Jacoby. That's yeah. right. I'm still hammering uh, Vegas. Uh, it hurts. It hurts. It does. Well, Vegas beginning of the year went stupid games. Like stupid games. They went stupid games beginning of the year, and their car, for whatever reason, is in the MVP conversation too. I saw I saw a picture of the top three MVP candidates right now. I said two of them, right? You know, the last one is probably. I'm gonna say, Derek Carr. It's Carr, Kyler Murray, and Tom Brady right now. Those are the three guys. So Tom Brady obviously is doing shit that we shouldn't be doing at 42 years old. Uh, but, yeah, Vegas, maybe they finally get it together, but it's the fucking Raiders, bro. It is the it's the fucking Raiders. Are you going, are you going Miami? Or are you, I'm, you're no, going I'm Vegas? not. Because yeah. it's I'm not going. I'm, after what Miami did to me last week, it's going to take me a couple weeks to be ready this to is, pick this, this all this always happened. Last year happened too. You picked an underdog and it pissed you off. You didn't win, and you're like, "Nope, I'm not betting against this team. Again. I'm not betting with this team ever again." I, it's not ever again. I might end up depending it's on how the rest of the it's yeah, a few weeks. It's a few weeks. weeks. You, you got it. If you, you know, did, you, trust that. <laughs> yes, you screwed me. I put my faith in you and you shit in my hat. Now I gotta go wash my hat. Yeah, and once easy. once that smell goes away, maybe. If Tua comes back from this still, injury, no, it's still, I'm still taking the Raiders. No, I mean I'm not saying for this game. If he comes back from his injury at some point and he starts balling out, maybe I'll pick the Dolphins again later down the line. Or the Dolphins. He's not been good. He hasn't been. Uh, not been worth the hype. Uh, I, we're both going Las Vegas on that game. So then the next one, Tampa and Los Angeles. This one, I'm surprised this, this is getting Monday Night Football. This, this is a game of the week for sure. It's a one point spread. One. That's. Honestly, not surprising at all. Tell me, tell me who the favorite is. I think it's, isn't it LA? It is LA. 
because they're at home too. Yeah. Because when I was looking at the lines, I remember seeing that shout out my bookie. Yeah, no, no, uh, free shout out, but always free shout outs for my bookie. Um, but yeah, the Rams. I saw that at home. It makes sense. Um, it's dead even. Plus one for the Bucks. Minus one for the Rams. Minus one ten all around on the money line. This is a game. Is must watch TV. This this is must watch TV. There's honestly there's a I think there's a very good chance this could be the, the NFC Championship because mm-hmm. you look at two of these teams the Rams have been rolling and the Buccaneers the Bucks are Bucks though. This is the first time that we're getting the Matt Stafford Tom Brady matchup where Stafford's actually going to have a chance to play. <laughs> where where like he, he has a team that can compete with the other team. team. Yeah, no, this is this is a huge quarterback matchup. Uh, I'm excited. And great about defensive that. matchup too. Yes. Oh my God! Talk about a defense of heaven. Yeah. Jalen Ramsey out there, Jaren Aaron Donald, Dom, Dom, Dom Kinsu, Antoine Winfield, Vita Vea. Holy shit! Vita Vea is still the scariest. Vita Vea is the size of your fridge. Legit. Like, Legit. Like, <laughs> like maybe the fridge might be a little bit smaller. This this is a game where it's 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 fun football. Yeah. I, it's it's good. It's it's good shit. That's, I'm, that's hoping, it's good I'm shit. hoping this game is going to be like the uh, Kansas City Los Angeles game a couple years ago yeah. on Monday Night Football. That was just fun to watch. I mean. Uh, who, who do you got? I'm, I'm going to LA. Okay. I, I'm going to run LA. I, I look. Everyone say well, Buccaneers going to go eight seventeen. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah, go it's 17. not going to happen. I'm going to go with the Rams here with an upset because actually, tell you it's not an upset on, based on my bookie. But I'm going to go Rams here because I think Stafford has got a little more juice under him. And holy fuck, Cooper Cup is the number one receiver right now facing football. Look. <laughs> Ben Stafford dealt with no receivers forever, and he made Kenny Gall- He got Kenny Gall. They paid. He got Calvin Ann- or Calvin Johnson in the Hall of Fame. He got Marvin Jones paid. Too. Marvin Jones paid, and now he has good receivers. Cooper Cup is having field days, and they haven't even got their running game going. Sonny Michelle hasn't even played much. Daryl Henderson has played pretty decently, but like this, this Rams team is legit. And and like I said, the Buccaneers are going to lose a game at some point. I don't think they're going to lose very many games, but I think this is multiple. This will be interesting because this is where our pick is going to start to flip because we were pretty much dead even for the first few games, and now we're starting to differ. I think we'll be different on this game too. Seahawks at Vikings. Uh, I went with the Vikings. Why? First of all, just why? I, I want to hear your why. They're at home, and Seattle just they weren't able to finish a game that they should have been able to win easily. Against a good team. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not saying team. even even teams playing against good teams. Once you get a certain lead, when it's not the playoffs, when there's nothing really on the line, it was week two. Yeah, you no. should be able to close that out. I'm still going with Seahawks because the Seahawks have more talent than the Vikings. The Vikings, for some fucking reason, decided they're not going to feed Dalvin Cook. They said, "Yo, let's let's let Kirk Cousins air it out." You and they were playing catch the whole game. You gotta justify eighty-four million dollars guaranteed somehow. And no, but you also gotta justify Dalvin Cook being your 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 franchise centerpiece. Like just Jefferson is a baller, but like get, you don't have a quarterback that's consistent get him the ball. Dalvin Cook can consistently get the ball from the quarterback and run three yards. All you gotta do is exist between the snap and those three seconds between you and the ball. All you gotta do. I, and and they're incapable of that. Like I said, they. They find new ways to <laughs> them and the Chargers. And if we if we were a Midwest podcast, I'm sure we'd be saying the same exact thing we say about the Vikings about like we say about the Chargers. Chargers don't know how to lose stupid games and don't know how to win big games. And the Vikings are exact same. I don't know. It's one of the, it's kind of I got to make up some ground on you in the pick them, but I also I'm encouraged by what the Vikings did against the Cardinals last week. I'm encouraged by it. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, this at least has a little bit more going into it than my Lions pick. My Lions yes. pick was just you know, Lions pick was a pick in the dark. You're like, oh, fuck out of spite. Yeah, yeah, out of spite. That's that's all it was. Aaron Rodgers has a man bump. Oh, Lions got it. Next game, uh, Sunday night football game, rematch of the NFC Championship from two seasons two ago. Years ago yeah. Packers at 49ers. I went with the 49ers. I think this one was. Uh, it's pretty mature because obviously we didn't watch the Monday night football yeah. game. And San Francisco has been very. On and off is the best way to put it. Because they came out and smacked the Lions, but they let the Lions back in the game. They come, they come out and barely beat Philly, who Philly is is not the greatest team, but they're not they're not terrible. And and the 49ers are just they're just waiting to get I guess ready for Trey Lance. Is that the best way to put it? Because because they're obviously Jim Garoppolo is not going to be there much longer. 
And their offense, like Brandon Ayuk, that's another one of the biggest mysteries of fantasy football right now. And but Debo Samuel has been playing well in their running game. This running back by committee, it's all over. Yeah, because yeah, Mostert is out now. And but Mostert but, was going to be Mostert was going to be that guy. And. So I'm, I'm also gonna, also hasn't really looked great. Most yeah, because they're throwing double teams at him. They don't. He doesn't have. I think it was Alvin Smith on the other side. I don't think he has him anymore. Yeah, uh, I think the Forest Buckner. The Forest Buckner, that's right. Yeah. That was the other guy. That so was I'm gonna ride Green Bay. Like I said, I think Week One was a fluke for the Packers. I think I think this is a get right game, and 49ers, This this is a game where Aaron Rodgers wishes he was in the Four Niners. This is this is the team he wanted to go to. Let's not forget the team that the Packers didn't want to trade him to because it was it was in their conference, and that they decided, oh, we're just going to pull the trigger on Trey Lance instead. This is the team he wanted to go to, and now you're facing him. I think he's got a little bit of retribution. Yeah, I think that these two teams are very even team roster wise and scheme wise. Obviously, they run the same scheme because Lafleur used to be on Shanahan's staff, uh, both Kyle and Mike. Yeah. Um, but that's that's my coaching's my X factor. Coaching beat beat them twice in that season because remember they had a Monday night football game against each other too. That's right. Yeah. That season and the Packers got their shit kicked by the 49ers twice that year. And in the NFC Championship game they passed ten times. It's not the same team. It's not the same team. But I like Kyle. The Packers defense also look terrible. I will I will say that the fact they look terrible on Monday night football. The half I was watching before start recording that. They look very, very bad, and against against the Lions team that basically torched them up with Hawkinson over the middle. I mean, Hawkinson I know Jamal good. Williams and DeAndre Swift are good running backs, but they're not. They're not like, next level running backs. Yeah, players. they may be eventually, but they're not that yet. And now you have George Kittle over the middle, who's Hawkinson is a stud, but George Kittle is, is another level. Hawkinson is team. the evolved version. Yeah, or, <laughs> Kittle is the evolved version of TJ. TJ George Kittle is TJ Hawkinson in three years. Yes. TJ Hawkinson is not there yet. TJ Hawkinson is still a boy. George Kittle is, is a man. grown ass man. Yeah. So, I'm still around Green Bay though, because like I said, I am still a believer in Rodgers is a bad man. I may be slowly turning away from being, he's, I can't wait till he's a Denver Bronco, because I'm loving the Teddy Tumble system. I'm loving it, baby. So, I'm, I'm still going to ride Green Bay though. I don't, it's just interesting. I don't know where he's going to go then. Because the Broncos, they're they're going to be asking, they're going to be saying, why the fuck would we trade that much? Well, it's not going to be. This trade value has dropped. Is it good? I thought it, that was the whole thing about it being next year is that he'd be a free agent. I didn't that's think true, that was a trade true. situation. That's true. That's also true. I thought there was still trade pack. Like I, I don't know. I thought they still signed trade. Or something. Denver has an X factor because his fiance is from here. From Boulder. Lives in Boulder. You never know. So maybe he wants to be. Maybe he wants to be close to his girlfriend. Maybe doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that likes to have just days with his girlfriend, though. I th- honestly, I think I can happily, not happily say this, I think there's a good shot this is the last year in the NFL. I, because I don't think he, I, I, look, because with the Broncos, they're going to ride Teddy. If Teddy plays like this whole season, you do not try different. Yeah. So, and I don't see a whole lot of other options. Next game that we have here, it's Monday Night Football game. Eagles, Eagles, and Cowboys, big NFC East rivalry. These two teams and their fan bases hate, hate each other. This is probably two of the, the most passionate fan bases yeah. of, in terms of just absolute hatred for an organization and love. Yes. They, they ride or die. They hate their team and they love, love their team. team. They, 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 it kills them how much they love their yeah. team. No, I've, I know the feeling, except me, it's just me. I don't have... 50,000 buddies that feel the same exact way about my team. Uh, Eagles plus four, underdog, Cowboys favored, minus four. Uh, plus 175 is the money line for the Eagles. And the over-under is set at 51 and a half. Honestly, it could be a shootout. Yeah, uh, it could be. Defenses aren't very good. The Eagles haven't scored many points at all yet this season. The Cowboys, we all know Dak Prescott puts up. Dak Prescott, talking about resurgence. Dude, like, I'm so happy for him. Guys are playing so damn well. And and finally, for fuck's sake, thank you. Um, 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 what's what's the head of Mike, not Mike McCarthy? Mike McCarthy. Finally, you Zeke. Because my other league, the league I have safe one in, I also drafted Zeke. <laughs> and I finally got back on track because they said, you know what, Zeke, you are that guy. Tony Tony Pollard is not that guy. Zeke is. Please feed Zeke. It's all I'm asking for my fantasy football sake. <laughs> So are you going? No, I'm riding the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. I've done it two weeks in a row now. I was happy with the last week because I knew 
The Chargers will lose it somehow, and I think the Cowboys are going to win this game against them. Now. I'm going with the Cowboys because everybody knows I have zero faith in the Eagles and Nick Sirianni this year. Um, zero faith. So that's going to be this week's NFL pick Be sure to vote in the polls. I'm putting them out before the video drops on YouTube so you guys can see what the games are and what the matchups are. This will be tweeted out Thursday at FEOTV Pod.